Um, we do know that China is a buyer of silver and, and they don't export. It's illegal actually for China to export silver. Uh, we know India is an importer of silver. Um, the United States is, is an importer of silver. Um, so where it's coming from, God knows, but uh, you know, there is a limit of, to the supply. I think we're at a point now where people are waking up to, to silver. You know, uh, um, it's not performing as well as gold, but I still think it's going to. And uh, I don't know, I, I just think, you know, if, if we don't see $30 silver by the end of this year, I'll be very, very surprised. Last year saw a staggering deficit in silver, with estimates pointing to a shortfall of around 400 million ounces. Although approximately 120 million ounces were recycled, a substantial deficit of roughly 250 to 300 million remained. This deficit, as highlighted by Keith Neumeyer, raises questions regarding the sources of silver. China has emerged as the dominant consumer of silver globally, accounting for a significant 18% of the global fabrication demand in recent years. Similarly, India and the United States stand out as major importers of silver. However, despite this persistent demand, the available supply of silver remains finite. Even the exchange-traded funds, ETFs, steadfastly maintain holdings of around a billion ounces of silver over the past five years, showcasing enduring investor interest. Keith speculates on potential hoards of silver held by private individuals or governments, but emphasizes the inherent limits to the available silver reserves. Simultaneously, Keith observes that people are increasingly recognizing the potential of silver despite its recent underperformance compared to gold. While gold prices soar to all-time highs, silver prices have struggled recently. Nonetheless, since the end of February, the spot price of silver has surged by nearly 13%, ascending from $22.72 an ounce to $25.65 on Tuesday. Keith predicts it would be surprising if silver does not breach the $30 per ounce mark by the year's end. Against this backdrop, the mining sector emerged as a crucial player, producing 820 million ounces of silver last year. However, global consumption surpasses production, reaching 1.2 billion ounces. Keith questions the mining sector's ability to meet this growing demand, especially given the existing deficit. With 46% of silver consumption attributed to various uses, he wonders where the extra supply will come from to meet this increasing demand. We will present clips from Keith Neumeyer's interview with Arcadia Economics. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Uh, you, you know, these, you know, where the silver is coming from, like, who knows? Like, I, I remember that famous... I've said this before in other interviews and I'll, I'll repeat myself, but um, I remember that famous uh, photograph of uh, Putin, you know, holding that gold bar. He was downstairs in, in, in the uh, one of their big vaults, I gather, in Moscow. And uh, and, I, and it was quite fascinating. He was quite proud. You know, they were you know buying a lot of gold at that time. This is a few years ago. And um, uh, I looked at that, I zoomed in and along the back wall was all these pallets of silver. And they go, wow, geez, that's a, more, you know, that's a lot of silver. You know, I, you know, I couldn't add it up, of course. You know, who knows exactly how much silver was there? But it's non-reported. Um, uh, you know, we have a four hundred million ounce deficit last year, of which you know, one hundred and call it twenty million ounces was recycled. So call, call it a three hundred million ounce deficit, or even two hundred fifty million ounce deficit, whatever the number is. It's a big deficit. So, you know, these these ounces are coming from somewhere. Um, we do know that China is a buyer of silver and, and they don't export. It's illegal, actually, for China to export silver. Uh, we know India is an importer of silver. Um, the United States is, is an importer of silver. Um, so where it's coming from, God knows. But, uh, you know, there is a limit of, to the supply. You know, they, they, the ETFs aren't dropping. You know, the ETFs are around a billion ounces and, and have been around a billion ounces, plus or minus five or 10 percent over the last, you know, five years. Um, so the, the other hordes that are are out there, I guess, are private hordes held by people that aren't disclosing or potentially governments. But, you know, there's only so much. Right? And, uh, you know, I think we're at a point now where people are waking up to, to silver. You know, uh, um, it's not 
performing as well as gold, but I still think it's going to. And um, I don't. I I just think yeah. If if we don't see thirty dollars silver by the end of this year, I'll be very very surprised. Oh well, the mining sector produced eight hundred and twenty million ounces of silver last year. The human race consumed one point two billion ounces. It's expected that we're going to consume one point four billion ounces in twenty twenty four. I don't know that the mining sector is going to produce more than what it did last year. Um, so call it eight twenty, call it even call it eight fifty. You know whatever the number is. You still have, you know, a, a, a huge deficit that's growing year and year and year. And that number, forty six percent, that you just flash up on the screen, you know, you know, back of my head, one one point four billion times forty six percent is getting close to, you know, one to what almost over two billion. Yep. So, so you're at two billion consumption. Where does it kind of come from? Gold's upward trajectory persisted for the sixth consecutive day fueled by momentum following funds, propelling prices to unprecedented heights. This surge, reaching beyond $2,200, has surprised many analysts, including Keith, given the prolonged anticipation of such a milestone. In contrast, silver's steady performance falls short of expectations, struggling to breach the $30 mark despite widespread speculation. Keith draws parallels between the current market dynamics and those of the early 2000s, when the Nasdaq's rapid ascent and subsequent crash prompted investors to reconsider their portfolios. Investors seeking refuge in tangible assets like precious metals and real estate fueled a remarkable bull market in the resource sector from 2002 to 2012. Gold prices surged from $250 to an impressive $1,900, while silver experienced an unprecedented rally, soaring from $5 to a staggering $50 per ounce. Reflecting on the present, Keith sees that prevailing conditions suggest a resurgence in the resource sector. With global markets displaying robust upward trends across various asset classes, investors increasingly turn to real assets as a hedge against uncertainty. This sentiment and historical precedence hint at a significant potential upside in gold and silver prices. Let's get back to the interview. You know, I, I have to admit it surprised me. Um, uh, you know, looking, I'm looking at the Kitco right now, and I'm saying twenty, it's twenty two hundred dollars. You know, plus, oh, wow, that's you know, we, you know, we we've been wishing for twenty two hundred dollar gold for for ten years, so it's it's uh, it's finally here. Silver's uh, driving me crazy. It should be thirty, but it's you know barely getting through twenty five. But uh, it'll 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 catch up. Um, you know, I think, but I honestly do think this is 2000 all over again. I still think that, you know, we've got, we've got this, um, everything is going up right now. We've got the stock market going up. We've got Bitcoin going up. We've got gold and silver out. Like, I, I don't think there's a single asset out there that's going down. Maybe, maybe, maybe real estate, uh, but, uh, you know, I, but generally speaking, everything is going up. So everyone's making money. Everyone's happy. Everyone's, you know, portfolios are been great. And I'm waiting for that shoe to drop, you know, and, 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 uh, um, so I'm always suspicious. I've been in this industry for a long time. So, you know, I'm waiting for the Dow to crack, the, the NASDAQ to crack and, and, uh, um, and, and all that money to come floating into the resource sector, which will, which is exactly what happened in 2002. You know, we hit, you know, the NASDAQ hit 5,000 in, in March of 2000. I remember that very, very clearly. And over the over the three years after that, the Nasdaq went down to eight hundred, went from five thousand to eight hundred in three years. And where did all that money go? It went into the resource sector and real estate, and because uh, you know people were going after real assets, they oh we can't keep investing money in these stupid high tech stories, and you know the, you know companies are losing money with with no revenues and all these storytelling you know uh, companies blah 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 blah. And the market woke up and said, we're going to stop investing in that group of assets and we're going to start investing in mining. And all that money flew, you know, flew, flowed into the mining sector. We had a 10-year bull market from, you know, 2002 to 2012. Gold went from 250 to 1900 and silver went from 5 to 50. And you use those same kinds of numbers today. So that's 10 times on silver. You, use, you know, call 20 bucks if you want to call $20 10 times. That's $200 silver. You know, eight times on gold, you know, from whatever number you want to pick. But, you know, those are big, big numbers. And, uh, 
you know, I don't think it's that impossible to see those kinds of crazy numbers on this next big run. Silver showed strong upward movement during Tuesday's early trading hours, but faces a significant resistance level around $26. Breaking above this barrier could trigger a fear of missing out, FOMO effect. Yet persistent resistance suggests an impending pullback. However, any pullback is likely to present a buying opportunity, with strong support expected around the $24.50 mark. Silver's inherent volatility makes cautious trading essential. A breakdown below $24.50 may lead to further declines towards $23.50. Identifying value opportunities amid short-term fluctuations remains key to navigating this market. Share your thoughts on Keith's prediction in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.